The good ideas are out there. I think listening to people on the ground is an important way to go. Make sure that you're not kind of um, in your bubble or in your ivory tower and really um, figure out the ways to listen to ideas and to encourage them and then to act on them. I think this is a you know interesting time for politicians, for community leaders, for business leaders, and uh, there are no easy answers. And you're, I think one of the biggest things and one of the biggest opportunities for Indianapolis is to continue to be a bright, shining spot on the national level and see economic growth, to see how we continue to grow our communities, to continue to grow education in our communities and build this culture that is really attracting to businesses and to the people that are looking to relocate and find a high quality of life. When I talk to my peers in other metros, um, they struggle to have the kind of organizational alignment with other partner organizations, not-for-profit service providers that we have in Indianapolis, and to leverage that. Fostering an environment that can really help grow meaningful work is where I think uh, policymakers and, and community leaders can and should rally around. Growth of local talent here is important. How can we keep all these great people that we're educating and training in Indiana here in Indiana? So that's where they really want to stay and where they want to end up. I would tell them to actually go and talk to the people that are experiencing the conditions of poverty and to have real conversations with them about what their challenges are and what their needs are because what I find when I talk to policymakers is that they have a lot of ideas but not a lot of lived experience. Getting serious about affordable housing um, and doing it now is uh, important. Our youth are struggling with a lot these days and they're inundated with so much on social media, um, on the media itself, and how they're portrayed, especially youth from backgrounds like I came from, from low income backgrounds and um, backgrounds where you are a minority. And so I wish that lawmakers and policymakers would listen to those youth voices a lot because they do know what they need and they do know what they want. And so if we listen to them, we can meet their needs a lot better. I think that investing in early childhood education is critical for several reasons. Brain development during the first three years of life is at its most prolific. Also, having high quality and affordable early childhood education allows more parents to be in the workforce. Just really investing in, in our youth uh, and making sure that they're prepared, you know, whether, whether it is get going to college or not, to be able to be successful. One of the biggest things that we have to get figured out is our public education, uh, because I think that has a generational impact. And so it's always a challenge because politicians do have a kind of very short-term uh, window that they uh, kind of have to worry about just by virtue of their job and getting elected. Um, and education, things like education, are, are long-term problems. Um, but if we can fix that, if we can solve that, then uh, it has an impact across multiple generations uh, because kids grow up and then they have kids and they have kids and I think that's what we need to get solved. I'd, I'd pass hate crime legislation first. Um, I think that's a top priority item that this city and this state desperately needs. We need to ensure that we are making a community inclusive um, for all folks to thrive. Uh, it's hard not to get personal with this one, I suppose. I just think that the more that Indianapolis can be a welcoming city, um, a city that is inclusive and is trying to create opportunities for all demographics, everyone across the board, I think the more that they can do that, the more people will come to the city and see Indianapolis as a, as a destination. Unity is desperately needed across our country. And one thing that we take pride in at the state of Indianapolis is that we unite everyone behind the concept, the idea that we are one city. I think public officials should um, continue to make sure that we've got a uh, open, inviting, welcoming uh, uh, economy, uh, uh, social fabric, um, business climate, uh, and um, you know, family environment for, uh, for people to be here. And that means we've got to have strong schools everywhere. Uh, that means that uh, all people, 
uh, need to be protected everywhere, whether they're in the workplace or not. I think it's important that we figure out how do we work together as, as healthcare providers. I think there's a lot of competition from market growth, um, uh, a lot of building and a lot of um, competitive compensation practices that make healthcare more expensive. Healthcare in this country is a complicated thing and you know various places I've worked during training and since you know when you meet people and you're taking care of them and everything and something very serious goes on with them and they have a, a life-altering medical experience there's something just extra tragic about when they come back to your office and they aren't even focused on getting better at that point. They're trying to figure out how to pay their five or six figure hospital bill. I think continuing to invest in not only health, but the what we call, we're really focusing on the social determinants of health within FSSA. So focusing on um, personal health and wellness and all the environmental factors that go into not just healthcare, um, but you know we're talking about transportation, food, um, Envi environmental stressors, all of those things impact our Hoosiers. Anytime I'm in front of legislators and speaking to public policymakers, it's about diabetes and how we need to curb the epidemic and need to address and spend some dedicated attention focusing on diabetes. I would like politicians to visit the hospitals and talk to the doctors and talk to patients and nurses to see what are the barriers that people are dealing with. Why are people not getting access to care? And when clinics are built, why are people not getting care early, despite a clinic being right down the street? So I think that if they come and visit and put, put themselves in the shoes of the patients, then maybe they can understand those barriers and would help advocate for um, change. Look for our strengths and capitalize on those. Uh, rather than just trying to, you know, keep up with the Joneses and, you know, look for some lists that we talk.